My trip behind the closed doors of the Central California Women's Facility came full circle as I returned to the building where I had started, Building 504, Administrative Segregation. It was like entering a time warp. I was struck by the fact that everything was just as I had left it. The guards, the noise, even Joker whistling from her cell. But now as an outsider, I saw Deborah Shannon and Lisa Langero not so much as jailers, but as women who come to work here every day. Not only inmates are doing time, but I'm doing time also. So when I come to work, I'm locked up inside of here. I can't live for eight hours a day. It was a hard adjustment at first because it's not like working out in the outside world where you can go get in your car and go get something for lunch or go make a phone call. The verbal abuse that we get in here, that's just part of the job. Okay, you can't take it personal. I mean, if they don't cuss you out, you're going, how come they not cuss me out today? If you want respect from them, you have to give them respect. This is their home. But while most of the inmates here will go back to the general population after an average stay of several weeks, the inmates in this special caged off section of ADSEG will never leave. Here at the prison, they call it condemned row. The 11 women who call this cell block home are all sentenced to die. Television cameras have never been allowed behind this closed door until now. Inside death row, I was fitted with my own bulletproof, stab-proof vest. Obviously, we're concerned about the safety of anyone who's involved with death row inmates. They're on death row for a pretty good reason. Uh, they've committed murder at, at some point, so they have nothing to lose. While we were inside, the condemned inmates were in lockdown. We were not permitted to show them on camera. I think the thing that's so striking to me is that most of the women in this one little area seem so normal, like everybody on the outside, and yet they've committed heinous crimes. Do you have to remember that and never let your guard down? Always. I, they can be the nicest person, but I have that in the back of the head that they have that potential of being dangerous. Death for these women will come by lethal injection or poisonous gas, their choice. But just when that will be is hard to say. Most of the women on Condemned Row are still appealing their death sentence. The last time a woman was executed in California was 1962. All right, so they basically live like the general prison population, yes. just confined in within this area. area. Yes. But this is it, this is their this world. Is for the 11 we members. have been told that none of the women here wish to be on camera. But as we were leaving, one of the women on Condemned Row asked if I would interview her. For the first time ever, prison officials agreed. We were escorted to an interrogation room across from death row. Under heavy guard, Carrie Lynn Dalton was escorted to our interview. Carrie is 48 years old, the mother of five children ranging in age from 12 to 21. She has been on death row since her youngest was seven years old. Carrie was convicted of torturing and murdering another woman by injecting her with a syringe of battery acid. During our interview, five guards were placed around the room for my protection. Can I just start by asking you how long you've been here? I've been on the row a little over five years. A little over five years mm -hmm. here? Right, but I've been in prison nine years. How do you go about living your life in here? Attitude-wise, how do you approach it? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty mad a lot of the time. Most pretty of the mad? Time. Mm -hmm. Mad at who? Mad that I'm sitting on death row for a murder with not one shred of physical evidence, nothing, because I have an extensive criminal history, because I'm a drug addict, because I don't know, I'm mad. I'm mad. I've been sitting on death row for over five years, waiting, rotting, because I admit that I'm a drug addict, because I've been an outlaw most of my life. You know, they threw me away. Obviously, you know, there would be some people who would say you threw your own life away. Right, which I did. 
I hold myself accountable, but I'm not guilty of this crime. So as far as throwing my life away and spending my life in prison, I agree to that. I pretty much wasted my life. I was not surprised that Carrie spent a lot of time trying to convince me that she was not guilty. But I was surprised how quickly her emotional wall began to crumble. Do you have feelings of regret? Definitely. Or remorse for all the things Definitely. you did that all added up to whether it was that crime Definitely. or not? Definitely. Regret, shame, remorse, of course. Yeah, I'm sorry for my whole life. I am. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm proud of the things I've done. I'm very ashamed. I've done a lot of rotten things. A lot of rotten things. I've committed armed robberies. I've committed burglaries. I'm by no means some angel, poor, innocent, picked up out of society. My life took me here. And prison ain't cool. I've been coming to prison. This is my seventh time coming to prison. Okay, but I had to hit all the way to the bottom to say, wait a minute, man, this ain't right. And now the consequence, consequence is that is you're... it's too late. I spent all my chances. And how do you spend your days now? I exercise, I read, I study. I try to just fill my head with knowledge. Um, I don't know. I spend my days. I try not to think because if I think too hard, I hate myself. You have a tiny self. That's it for you. That's my world, my little tiny what self. Is, what is that world like? It's okay until I come out of it. And I look around and I see the cage and I just, oh, I want to blow up. How would you feel if you woke up and, and seen yourself in a cage and you were on display and everybody could see you, you know? Uh-uh. It's a bad feeling. But I brought myself there, like you said. Do you have contact with your family? Yeah, I do. Do they write you or come here? Yeah, my dad visits me, and my family writes me. Has your mom ever come to visit you? She came every week until I came to death row. She can't. She can't look at me. Have your kids ever come to visit you? They came every day till I came to death row. And I don't want to talk about them because I don't want them involved in it. Yeah, I understand that. I and understand that's the worst that. thing, not what's happened to me, what's happened to my family, you know? Most of us never have to ponder the thought, but what are your thoughts about being executed? That's not the bad part. The bad part is living here like this. Dying doesn't, doesn't scare me. That's not the bad part. The bad part is living here every day. Why have you chosen to talk to us? I want my children to know what I've done. I don't want them to live the life I've lived. And I want people, people out there that are living their life as a drug addict, teenagers or whatever, to see me and know that it's wrong. It's wrong. And nobody could have been a bigger drug addict or more dedicated to the life than I was, seriously. And I'm telling you, it's just a big lie. If they think it's cool, think again. It's not. It's not. It's a dead end. Prison's a dead end. And as she was escorted back to her tiny cell, I was reminded of what a dead end really means for Carrie Lynn Dalton.